Hey there guys, what's going on? So a very happy Monday, April the 16th of 2012 to all of you out there today. Um, I'm not sure if I made note of it or not, but uh, since my last video, my uh, M. Ward, a Wasteland Companion review, um, I have indeed been on a uh, mini vacation per se. So um, I got a little time off there and didn't work too much on uh, videos or getting things together. But um, we are back today with everything, with... Uh, you know, responsibilities, adult life, blah, blah, and of course, the prospect of new videos. So, let's begin with that. So, while I was indeed on vacation this week, um, I was able to catch a uh, very big music-related thing over this past uh, three days or so. Uh, for those of you out there who don't know already, or for those of you who uh, enjoyed watching weekend number one, um, it was the Coachella Festival out in the California desert this past weekend. Um, had a big... A uh, huge lineup of bands for um, all three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, not everything was streamed, of course, but uh, YouTube uh, picked up the uh, best of the bunch, I guess, and a bunch of different genres and things, and um, ran them across the three days. You could catch stuff, like, I mean, really well-known stuff, really successful, uh, like indie bands, things like that, or things maybe you didn't know quite so much about, and uh, maybe, like, okay, this is as good a time as any to try them and see... Okay, well, maybe I want to get their music. So, um, starting Friday night, uh, which was a really good night, in fact, um, I started out by watching uh, the Arctic Monkeys, which I haven't talked too much about the Arctic Monkeys on my channel. I did give them a ranking of 10 out of 10 in my best of the year list for 2011 with uh, their album Suck It and See, which I thought was very quality. Uh, was was a very quality album. Uh, they're one of uh, Really one of the prime uh, Brit rock acts out there in the contemporary uh, market, in my opinion. I think they're uh, very, very good at what they do. Some people were a little disappointed with their set list, the stuff that they were playing. Um, I'm not sure if, if it's because there wasn't a lot of stuff from the newer album, or maybe the cuts just weren't um, the cuts everyone really likes or expected. Um, but I thought they sounded really good. Uh, the newer cuts sounded excellent, and uh, the older stuff, which I had never heard because I really haven't, delved back into their catalog beyond Suck It and See, um, those sounded really good. Very uh, very heavy rock, even almost not quite metal, not really metal, but heavier in a sense that more than what I've heard on their newer stuff. And I liked um, how kind of it showed kind of a mix of swagger and sort of reckless abandon to it all at once. Later that night, I watched the, uh, the Black Keys, which was the uh, big attraction of the evening. Um, they were every bit as good as expected, um, as per usual with the keys when they play. Um, they do some. They start out with uh, two other guys. They do a four-piece band, obviously Dan Arbach on guitar, uh, Pat Carney on drums, and then they have a guy on bass and a guy on keyboards, which makes sense because uh, some of those songs, like on Brothers and the newer albums and even their older stuff as well, um, does have traces of organ and things like that. You need that little extra uh, fill in, in with that. They also, in the middle... Um, do go down to just the two-man outfit, just the two of them, and uh, you're back to sort of that uh, bluesy garage rock stuff, which is awesome. That's my favorite stuff of theirs. And uh, they played some, some, some stuff from a bunch of different things. They played, uh, obviously, new stuff from El Camino. Um, there were some things from Brothers in there, uh, Tighten Up, most notably. Um, there was uh, maybe at least one song from Magic Potion, um, they, play, they were all over, even from their first record, there was one in there. I thought they played a really good set. Um, they were loud when they, you know, were loud, and they uh, grooved it out when they needed to groove it out, and I thought they uh, mixed it up really well. Um, I really had a lot of fun watching that. So that was it for Saturday, um, or for Friday, excuse me, for Friday at Coachella. Saturday, which was good, I was uh, just coming home from vacation that day, in fact, um, and got home that afternoon, and fortunately, because these are California dates, um, they do disadvantage people on the East Coast who maybe go to bed earlier for various reasons, um, because they do generally each day, um, unless you're talking like the first uh, the first day, which had some earlier dates that I didn't really watch because I didn't know many of the acts. Um, they generally are later at night. It's usually 7 o'clock or later into the evening. Um, as late as 2 a.m., or uh, 1 a.m. in some cases. So you got to have a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of stamina to stay with it. But fortunately, by the early afternoon, we had uh, Childish Gambino come up first. Um, now, I'm really not a hip-hop, rap, 
genre mixing style um, fan by any means. Uh, not usually my cup of tea by any stretch, but I know um, Donald Glover, uh, who is Childish Gambino, that is his stage name, uh, from his acting roles and things like uh, Community and Mystery Team. So um, I was inclined to watch it because, it, you know, the show was just starting to get kicked off. These were the first couple of, uh, you know, sets of the day. And I thought, you know, well, we'll get it going and get rolling from there. And, um, you know, I almost would say that I would give him a try in terms of his music. Um, I probably won't, though. As much as I say that I will, I probably wouldn't really get around to listening to it, but I thought he was really high energy, he really got the crowd involved, um, and the band behind him just had just so much energy to him, and they just were so uh, lively and just hit each and every song. It seemed like there really wasn't too many soft moments where they weren't really uh, punching through a certain part or aspect. And I really I enjoyed that. I was at least um, very entertained to watch him. And um, Afterwards uh, were the Tune Yards, which um, I've never talked about here on my channel. Um, I've heard about them through uh, my favorite music blog a while back um, before they released, I think, their newest album or slightly after. E either way, they had released something at that point. Um, I don't like their recorded material as much. Um, I think their recorded material is maybe more of an acquired taste. Um, but live, the Tune Yards are one hell of a band. Um, they're led by this lead singer named Meryl Garbus, and she possesses just this absurdly powerful vocal. Um, you, I mean, you wouldn't think so given where they come from when you first hear the music. It's all very, um, like, it feels like very uh, African-inspired. A lot of drums, a lot of rhythm, um, a lot of beats, a lot of looping and things. She loops her voice over with some stuff. And um, that's why I love the live the live stuff. It doesn't sound as condensed, which I felt that on their album, uh, the sound of the vocals and things were a little condensed, and they just weren't as good. They didn't sound really that great to me. But I think live, it just works exceptionally well. It works beautifully, in fact. And I really um, was incredibly entertained to watch them and to watch her and just the, the kind of uh, technique she exudes as she goes through... Um, these songs with different uh, different parts, you know, sometimes just singing or sometimes she'd be, you know, hitting a tom drum or, you know, just looping some of her vocals over and just really exuding such a, a powerful force. I caught Noel Gallagher's uh, High Flying Birds after the fact. Um, there was either that or Laura Marling, so I just uh, picked one as a toss-up considering what channel it was on and the stuff I was going to watch later. I figured, well, I'll just go for it and see what I think. Um, I always, personally, I always liked Noel Gallagher, the best of the two brothers in Oasis. I know that Liam did a lot of the singing and, uh, you know, sang very, very well. But as the guitarist and everything, I always like Noel's uh, sound and his vocal ability just a little bit more than Liam. So he, he was always my favorite in that regard. However, Noel Gallagher's High Flying Birds, um, I can see why their album didn't exactly get a bunch of like critical hype. I think a lot of the songs are indeed kind of samey sounding and um, just really didn't hold up to any expectation I might have had going in. Um, and of really of anybody that I saw a weekend, I saw pretty much about 15 bands or so I watched on the stream, on the YouTube stream. Um, that was probably my least favorite and the only one I didn't really take something out of. Um, but that you know, that happens, you're not, uh, not every single one's going to be good, and uh, fortunately, right after that, the, really, the best part of the day began, the early best part that was going to take me through all the way through the evening, Andrew Bird was uh, beyond exceptional, had his uh, backing band, of course, and they went through tunes from, uh, from Armchair Apocrypha, Noble Beast, uh, the new album, stuff all over, and um, they played incredibly well, um, I think Andrew Bird just manages to impress me more and more the more that I hear of his work and how he alternates between being, you know, an exceptional violinist and then he works guitar in there and he uses looping as well. Let's go back to the tune yards there for a moment. And um, I think I only find him more and more impressive. And of course, um, if you follow my channel, you'll know that I talked about Break It Yourself, his newest album for this year. Uh, definitely still one of my top favorites for this year. And uh, it's really great to be able to hear one of his sets. And supposedly, 
Um, he will be playing at Coachella Week 2 next week, so I'm very, very excited about that. St. Vincent played. Uh, unfortunately, I did not see that. Um, apparently, a couple of notable things happened. I guess she... Um, unveiled a new song, which to this point I still haven't heard, um, but I will try to catch up on shortly. And um, apparently she dove into the crowd at one point, did a little bit of crowd surfing, some uh, pictures emerged of that, and uh, all around I think people were very, very, very impressed with her. Um, again, it was a matter of toss-up, like who do you pick to watch by comparison one to the other, and um, I just ended up deciding because I will be seeing Annie Clark at the beginning of May um, in uh, you know at a local venue coming up. Um, I figured you know I just I'll pick the other one and uh, go from there. So I mean I missed a little bit there, but no uh, no huge loss at least. Um, and you know who I saw was indeed worth it because instead of watching Saint Vincent, um, I saw the Shins. The Shins were really good, really really good, and I think they're also going to be back uh, next weekend for the Coachella weekend uh, number two. Um, they played a bunch of different songs, of course, uh, like New Slang was in there, uh, some stuff from their older records, um, Simple Song from the new album, uh, The Rifle Spiral, all the, a great mix of songs. They even worked in uh, a cover of Pink Floyd's Breathe, which I thought was exceptional. And uh, they just they sounded like a very cohesive band. Um, I think that, you know, once again, James Mercer has sort of uh, picked the correct path for where he's wanted to go with this band. And uh, it's good to see him back behind the helm with them. Um, I don't know what the chances are that I ever actually see them live, but um, I thought that they were an, a wonderful experience, and I really enjoyed seeing them. Uh, really added to the evening, especially since uh, right after that, it was time for Bon Ivar's set. I know opinions on Bon Ivar go both ways. Uh, some people absolutely idolize him and think he's wonderful, and some people just really can't stand him because of the voice and things and his higher register. Um, I, for one, am in the former camp. I really do enjoy his music, and I think that so many of his tracks are just just stunningly gorgeous. I mean, whether it's uh, orchestration or the harmonies that he's arranged, he has absolutely awesome backing singers with uh, Mikey Noyce and uh, S. Carey and the other guys he's gathered around him. Um, and they were just incredible. I mean, they brought great, you know, they brought songs from the new album, uh, like Perth and uh, Minnesota, WI, Wisconsin, I think that is, um, and with the transitions worked in, which I love transitions in songs, especially live, the way that they play out and the way that they, you know, kind of bind them together. And uh, uh, Wolves, act, the Wolves, Act 1 and 2 from Forever, Forever Ago, uh, Skinny Love, of course, uh, Holocene, a lot of great songs. I think The Wolves was probably my favorite. It closed the show, and uh, he just he got the whole crowd into it at the end, just singing as loud as they could, just this big harmony. Just, I can't imagine having been there to have heard that and to be a part of that. Um, I think that's really one of those magical musical experiences when you really become, like, one with something. You know, you, you, it's only going to be a brief period of time, and it's only those few minutes before... You know, the show ends, everybody goes their separate ways, but it's interesting to really contemplate what that feels like. Radiohead closed the night at uh, about 11.30, I believe the time was. It was the uh, late set, and there have been a lot of rumors both ways going into it, whether they were going to play in that, in that time set, whether they were actually going to stream it. People thought for some reason that they weren't when it seemed like... Pretty much the only way they could go was with Radiohead to make everyone happy, and they are, you know, one of the marquee bands of the weekend, uh, because really Coachella did have a fantastic lineup for this. Um, so, of course, they were indeed Radiohead, and uh, they played a lot of great stuff from several different records, uh, King of Limbs stuff, um, OK Computer stuff, stuff that ranged from their, you know, their more odd electric kind of sound to uh, heavier rock, um, right down to really soft, very melodic tunes like Give Up the Ghost from the newest record, and then closing with uh, Paranoid Android, which is one of my favorite songs of theirs, and just one of my favorite songs in general. Um, and they were just, I, it, was, it was hard to stay awake that late, but because by the time they were done, because on the East Coast it started really late, it had to have been, it was just past 4 in the morning when that wrapped up. It was even later than 11.35 uh, over here. It was uh, really crazy, but it was worth every second because, 
I mean, those guys are just, they're just such a finely tuned band, and whatever genre they're doing, or whether it's more electronic, or, you know, hitting it with the heavy rock, they're very versatile, and uh, just really a pleasure to listen to. So that was all of Saturday. And then going into Sunday, Sunday was a little bit of a different transition here as we try to uh, get ready to close up the uh, Coachella weekend wrap up here on this Dog Ate My Vlogs. Um, initially, I wasn't so sure because we had last night, you know, on the Saturday night, we had had, you know, Andrew Bird, uh, St. Vincent, The Shins, Bon Ivar, Radiohead, all these exceptional bands, really the top marquee groups. And I thought, you know, I'm not really sure what they can bring today because it didn't really look like they had much in, on the way of a huge follow-up. It was hard to say. Um, but I have to admit, by the time when, su when Sunday was all said and done, I was, um, I was beyond pleased due to several um, really great acts. The first one was a band called Real Estate, a nice kind of sort of indie alternative group I'd heard of really only by name before. Um, so I wanted to give them a look and see what I thought of their music, because uh, I know they had put on an album semi-recently that had been uh, thought of as pretty favorable, so I figured now would be as good a time as any, and um, I sort of have paid attention in spots, because I was doing some other things at the time, but I thought that they um, they played a really good set, I thought they had a really, uh, really nice sound, and uh, I liked the lead singer's uh, sunglasses. Those were very impressive to me. But um, no, really, they, they played um, some good songs. And I would definitely uh, suggest trying out their album because I think um, at some point I'd like to pick it up also. There really just, there really is so much music and so little time to listen to all of it. There really is. Um, but Real Estate was another good one. And uh, they follow, They were followed up by uh, Wild Flag, which may have been even a little more impressive, um, led by an uh, all-female group of uh, several very notable uh, stars from other bands like uh, Sleater Kinney, um, Janet Weiss, um, and Carrie Brownstein, who is also known for her work on Portlandia. Um, they just, they absolutely shredded through their set. I didn't know really any of their songs, um, but the guitar work from Carrie, Br Carrie Brownstein Wow, it was impressive. It was just, it was a hell of a show to watch and to uh, really get in there tight with the camera to see her working away down the down the fretboard. I, it was it was exceptional. I was I was very impressed, and um, they just were absolute. They shredded through the whole thing, and it was it was it was a hell of a show. As good as Wild Flag was, and Wild Flag was very very good. Um, one of the best acts of the weekend, the understated dark horse that just stole the show, um, had to be hands down the hives. I don't know too much by them, but I knew of them, and I knew that they had a pretty um, energetic sound and really were quite, sort of a garage rock outfit in a sense. So when they were getting ready to play, I thought, well, this will be as good an opportunity as any to really experience what they're like, and um, I was not at all disappointed when all was said and done. Their lead man just had humor and energy and I mean the guy was just an absolute he was a dynamic force for the whole set and the band just shredded through every song. I mean they were just there wasn't a moment to slow down even for a second. It was one of the greatest high energy sets I think I've ever seen just in terms of I mean you know there's musicianship there's being, you know, there's careful uh, technique and everything, and then there's just ripping the house down with, you know, garage rock with, a, you know, a mixture and a case of punk. You know, it just, it worked so well. They were one of the the, the bands that definitely stole the show from the uh, the prime acts of the weekend. One of my favorites for sure. Um, now in the quieter section, um, after that, I watched um, Beirut, and I thought Beirut really. Um, did a wonderful job, Zach Condon and company. Um, I had never seen them live before. Um, I knew them from their album, The Riptide, which came out last year. Um, kind of got to that a little later in the year. Didn't really ever get around to doing uh, a review or really putting my thoughts together on it. But uh, the more I listened, I think they're definitely uh, a grower uh, in, in terms of their sound. Zach Condon was perfect, you know, vocally, and uh, their orchestrations were excellent. A lot of... Uh, horns and different sounds ranging from uh, very contemplative to almost like Spanish in a sense like uh, you expect them to be fighting the bulls or something like that. Um, awesome sound though. I really appreciated watching that 
And then the closer, for my weekend anyway, because I know there was a holographic Tupac and all of that, uh, my holographic clo uh, my holographic closer, my regular clo my closer for the evening, for Sunday night for Coachella, one of the last acts of the evening, um, was hands down Florence and the Machine. Of course, for those of you out there who don't know, Florence has a couple of albums now. Uh, Lungs, which came out a couple of uh, a couple of years ago, and I believe it's called uh, Ceremonials. Um, I believe it is, which came out this year, um, or late last year, I believe it was actually. And you know, it, it, her talent has been undeniable, and I think maybe I hadn't paid as much attention to that as um, I should have, because last night was it was the perfect closer. It was the perfect way to end what was a perfect weekend of music. She was whimsical. She was powerful in her singing. The band just was just on it. And I know I'm using the, the same words and phrases for a lot of things and what I'm describing, but so many of these bands were just, I've never seen these many, you know, this many shows, this, this, many, this much live stuff all backed up against itself with all these different bands that excel um, in different areas, like whether, you know, the quieter sound like with Beirut or, you know, tearing it apart like uh, the Hives or something like that. Um, but she really had just a great mix. She was incredibly dynamic all over the stage. I mean, for what she was wearing, this long, flowy dress, kind of uh, Stevie Nicks-esque, uh, retro-era Fleetwood Mac. I mean, she moved a lot quicker than I would have thought for, for a dress like that. And she was she was an incredible um, lead person, you know, really just a great showman, a showwoman, you know. And um, she, was, she was brilliant, and the band was brilliant, and the crowd was so into it where they had been dead at a couple of other of you know a couple of these live shows that I had watched, and she really brought them into it. And like when they got to Dog Days Are Over and all this stuff, it was just it was perfect. And that's my that's pretty much my Coachella wrap up for this weekend. Um, I'll definitely be doing another one after the upcoming uh, weekend too, which comes up on the twenty twenty first twenty second of April. Um, I'm very much looking forward to that. I'm not really sure who's going to play it. I know there will be some repeat ones like Andrew Bird, Bon Ivar, uh, The Shins. I think Florence and the Machine is actually supposed to be there again. Um, the Black Keys might be, I think, as well. Um, so I'm really looking forward to watching that all over again and definitely delivering another recap to, uh, to you guys. And I, I think that if you didn't catch Weekend 1 of Coachella, make some time for yourself this weekend. Get your homework done early. Uh, you know, get your sleep in advance. I think it's really worth it, and I think it's it's cool to you know not only see it bring people together who are experiencing just how wonderful these shows are, um, but it's also just about the great music. And I I feel there's no greater thing that you can do than to tell other people about great music that they're going to want to see that they're really going to get pumped up about. I think that's one of the best things there is, and I gotta say watch the Coachella Festival. If you didn't catch week one, find some recaps online. I know several of the bands um, were posted up on YouTube and things. Find some recaps of the sets that you would really like to see. And I, I urge you, I absolutely urge you, watch week two. It's going to be great. So I'm glad to be back from vacation, guys. I'm glad I can bring this extra long Coachella weekend wrap-up review to all of you out there. Um, I look forward to bringing you more videos this week. I have a used, uh, another used vinyl haul that I want to talk about very, very soon. Um, I have several requests for new reviews, um, as well as the new Alabama Shakes record. Um, and I think there's another release coming out uh, this, uh, this week. I'm not sure if it's uh, maybe Horse Feathers. Um, there's a bunch of things right now. And I have uh, several things like a Mark Lanigan Band that I definitely want to talk about. And uh, it's a big list right now. But we're going to start out simply here today. I thank you guys for watching, because I'm sure this is going to be pretty long by the time it's done. And as always, keep your music flowing, your vinyl spinning. Go watch yourself some Coachella and enjoy yourselves. I will see you all very, very soon.